Welcome to another Untamed video where the heart-stopping tales of Yellowstone National Park come to life. From thrilling adventures gone awry to mysterious disappearances that echo through the wilderness, join us to watch the human stories behind the majestic boundaries. From prohibited journeys to tragic encounters with nature's forces, each story unfolds suspensefully, leaving us captivated by Yellowstone's untamed beauty and unforeseen perils. Our story begins in the vast and majestic Yellowstone National Park, surrounded by rocky mountains and flowing rivers. The park was a place coordinated with wildlife and adventure. Inside the beautiful Yellowstone National Park, Darian Laddie served as a park ranger in Roosevelt Lodge. Hailing from the quiet community of Demarest in northeastern Georgia, Darian was on a thrilling summer escapade as a seasonal employee at the lodge. On August 11, 2014, Darian and two fellow Yellowstone National Park concessionaire colleagues went on an unusual adventure. They were holding inner tubes in their hands. They planned to float down the calm Lamar River, surrounded by the captivating beauty of bison and the excitement of late summer anglers. When they started their float in Lamar River, they didn't prefer to use inner tubes as the water was very calm and there was no need for the tubes. However, the piece of their float took an unexpected turn as they entered the confluence of Lamar and Yellowstone rivers, still raging with high and fast waters. Sensing danger, they promptly left the river, but Darien did not follow suit. When Darien saw the confluence of strong and angry waves, he regretted his decision not to use the inner tube. The situation worsened as he was also not wearing the life jacket. Without the inner tube and lacking a life jacket, he was last seen at 7.30 p.m. on that unfortunate Monday, helplessly propelled downstream by the rushing waters. The trio had gone against the rules by venturing into the forbidden activity of floating the river. The authorities were now faced with the pressing concern of finding young Darien, who had become a victim of the ferocity of the mighty Yellowstone River. As the news of Darien's disappearance spread like wildfire, a quick and efficient search effort started on that Monday evening. Over 50 individuals, including search and rescue teams with a helicopter, three dog teams, and groups of foot searchers dedicated themselves to unraveling the mystery of Darien's whereabouts. During this search, a sense of desperation fell upon everyone under the expansive skies of Yellowstone National Park. The searchers faced difficulties because of the Yellowstone River's extreme environment and erratic behavior. Every step was a reflection of their mutual commitment to finish the search. The helicopter blades slashed through the air, throwing shadows across the ground. It was a symbol of hope in the mystery of Darien's absence. As night fell, the search became more intense and the combined efforts of multiple teams created an image of devotion. With their sharp senses tuned to any hint, the three dog teams searched the park, bringing expertise to the hunt. Searchers on foot navigated the park's varied habitat, walking through deep forests and along riverbanks, looking for any indications of the missing individual. The authorities were united in the attempt to locate Darien and reveal the truth shrouded inside the broad boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, as evidenced by the coordinated efforts of everybody involved. Days passed, and the suspense heightened as late on Friday, August 15, 2014, searchers glimpsed what seemed to be a submerged body pinned to a large rock in a rugged section of the Yellowstone River. The discovery was approximately a quarter mile downstream from Darien's last sighting. The body was found, however, it was not possible to get to the body because of the ferocity of the river. The search took a decisive turn on Saturday when a swift water rescue team from Gallatin County, Montana joined the team. Along with kayaks and a raft anchored to both riverbanks, they navigated the treacherous waters to dislodge and recover Darien's lifeless body. The remote area posed challenges, but a helicopter proved instrumental in removing his body from this inaccessible terrain. That Saturday evening, the sad task of identification fell to the coroner. For days, the gripping mystery of Yellowstone National Park was resolved, but Darien Laddie's ill-fated journey remained a cautionary story. 
in the center of the gorgeous national park, where the Lamar River Valley echoes with the whispers of wildlife, the memory of Darien's adventurous spirit became a part of the park's history. The authorities reinforced the importance of adhering to safety guidelines, turning Darien's tragic tale into a cautionary reminder for all who love exploring nature's untamed beauty. The story also describes the importance of obeying the orders and rules issued by the authorities. The authorities know better how to manage the safety of people and wildlife. The employees must follow guidelines and precautions. A tale of mystery began to unfold in Wyoming, where vast landscapes grow in the embrace of nature. LaKayla Shea Putnick, a 14-year-old girl from Charleston, West Virginia, put herself in the middle of a dangerous journey that would capture the attention of those seeking answers. Yellowstone National Park, a world of awe-inspiring wonders, stood as a backdrop to Shea's peculiar adventure. The park, known for its geothermal wonders, majestic wildlife, and breathtaking landscapes, was the canvas for the unfolding story. Shay's story turned unexpectedly in the bubbling geysers and serene wilderness. Temporarily placed with a foster family in Wyoming, Shay's life took an unsettling twist on August 7, 2018. In the vast expanse of Yellowstone National Park, she made a decision that left her family and authorities concerned. Without a trace, she departed from her foster family, setting in motion a series of events that would baffle those attempting to make sense of her mysterious disappearance. The Kanaha County Sheriff's Office received an intriguing tip from a park visitor. A witness claimed to have seen Shay holding a sign, a cryptic message that hinted at her intentions. The sign boldly declared her desire to reach Denver. The motive behind Shay's journey remained shrouded in mystery, adding a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. No one knew why she wanted to go to Denver. Her foster family was also unaware of this visit. Days passed at average speed and there was no clue of Shay. Neither the family nor authorities received any communication from the adventurous teenager. The wilderness of Yellowstone held its secrets and Shay seemed to have become one with the park's enigmatic allure. As investigators delved into Shay's background, they found connections to distant lands, North Charleston, West Virginia, Fort Walton, Florida, Billings, Montana, and Denver. These connections painted a portrait of a teenager whose roots spanned across the vast American landscape. Each location held a piece of Shay's past, and the mystery deepened as the search expanded to encompass these diverse corners of the country. Why did Shay embark on this journey? What prompted a 14-year-old girl to go to Denver as her elusive destination? These questions raise concerns, echoing through the corridors of the sheriff's office and the minds of Shay's worried family members. Yellowstone National Park, known for its natural wonders, stood a silent witness of this secret. Amidst the geysers and mountains of Yellowstone, search and rescue teams continued on a search to unravel the mystery. The picturesque landscapes, once a source of tranquility, now echoed with the urgency of a community searching for one of its own. Helicopters soared above, and foot searchers combed through the dense vegetation, hoping to find a clue leading them to Shay. Despite all efforts, she wasn't found. The reasons behind Shay's decision, the significance of her ties to different places, and the mystery of her destination remained unanswered, leaving those following the saga in suspense. However, years later, there was a Facebook post from the Kanaha County Sheriff's Office. The post shed light on Shay's return. According to the post, Shay returned several months ago. When, how, and with whom? These questions were still unanswered. In the expanse of Yellowstone, where high mountains whisper tales of the past, the story of Shay and her unclear disappearance and return unfolded like a suspenseful novel. A teenager's disappearance, a cryptic sign, and the vast landscapes of America intertwined to create a narrative that would be etched in the annals of Yellowstone's rich history. A sad tale unfolded in Yellowstone National Park, where nature's beauty often reveals mysteries. 
In September 2018, Wyoming echoed the news of the missing brothers. Kim Crumbo from Ogden, Utah, and his brother Mark O'Neill from Chimacum, Washington, embarked on a four-night backcountry trip to Shoshone Lake. Little did they know, the wilderness they sought to conquer would become the stage for a heart-wrenching saga. Both brothers worked as professional river guides. Kim Crumbo spent 20 years with the National Park Service as a Grand Canyon National Park park ranger. He was a resource management specialist, wilderness coordinator, and a former Navy SEAL from Ogden. On Sunday, September 19th, a family member reported the overdue brothers triggering a search that would grip the park for weeks. The search crew scoured the trails, shores, and open waters, hoping to find a trace of the missing duo. The once tranquil Shoshone Lake now whispered secrets of uncertainty. As days passed, hope dwindled. On Monday, September 20th, the search crew made a grim discovery. Mark O'Neill's lifeless body lay on the east shore of Shoshone Lake. The cause of death exposure or hypothermia sent shockwaves through the park, marking the first tragic chapter of the wilderness tale. With one brother found, the search shifted focus to the still missing Kim Crumbo. The National Park Service's Submerged Resources Center employed sonar equipment and park crews tirelessly combed the area by foot and boat. Assistance came from Grand Teton National Park's interagency helicopter and dedicated dog teams from Western Montana Search Dogs. Despite five days of exhaustive efforts, the wilderness held on to its secrets. On September 24th, the search transitioned from rescue to recovery. Sonar equipment now delved into the depths of the lake, seeking clues that might lead to Kim Corumbo. The park, in a sad acknowledgement, prepared for the possibility that the wilderness might not yield its final secret easily. As the recovery efforts continued, the incident remained under investigation. The park's officials, bound by the unfolding tragedy, could only offer limited information. The specifics of the investigation were shrouded in the wilderness's enigma, leaving questions unanswered and the families uncertain. The saga of Kim Crumbo's disappearance in the wild embraced uncertainty. Yellowstone, a haven for natural wonders, now held within its borders a story of loss, resilience, and unanswered questions. Fueled by dedication, the park search and rescue teams continued their quest, hoping to bring closure to a tale that unfolded in the heart of the untamed wilderness. As the echoes of Shoshone Lake's waves whispered through the landscape, the fate of Kim Crumbo remained uncertain leaving a poignant mark on the park's history, where beauty and mystery often walked hand in hand. No one knew that a professional river guide and Navy SEAL would meet his fate like this and would be forever lost in the cruel waters. In the vast boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, where nature's wonders meet danger, a tragic tale unfolded on June 7, 2016. Colin Scott, a recent psychology graduate, and his sister Sable went on a journey that would take them beyond the safety of prescribed paths. Colin, a young man from the scenic city of Portland, Oregon, embarked on a day trip with his sister, eager to explore the wonders of Yellowstone. Their chosen destination was the Norris Geyser Basin, renowned for its enchanting thermal pools and geysers that paint the landscape with nature's vivid palette. Fueled by excitement and curiosity, the siblings set out on a journey that would tragically veer into dangerous territory. Despite clear warnings and designated paths marked for the safety of visitors, Colin and his sister chose a different route, deviating from the prescribed boardwalk. Venturing into the forbidden landscape, they unknowingly stepped into an area where the geothermal wonders held not only a lure, but also concealed the potential for grave danger. The stage was set for an unfortunate turn of events in this forbidden territory where the Earth's internal forces met the surface. Sable documented their forbidden exploration with a smartphone. As they approached a hot pool, tragedy struck. Colin, kneeling to gauge the spring's temperature, slipped and fell into the scalding waters. Within a matter of seconds, the boiling hot spring claimed the life of young 23-year-old Colin. 
In the absence of mobile phone service, Sable faced a desperate situation. Forced to leave the basin for help, she rushed to the nearby Ranger Museum, hoping that assistance would arrive in time to save her brother. Park officials, alerted to the incident, faced grim circumstances when they reached the spring. Remnants of Colin's head, upper torso, and hands were discovered, but the extreme conditions, a scorching 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit spring, and an impending lightning storm thwarted recovery efforts. The following morning, as officials returned to the spring, the cruel reality of nature's power was unveiled. The acidic pool had completely dissolved Colin's body, leaving only a few personal belongings, a haunting testament to the danger that lurks within Yellowstone's thermal wonders. As the echoes of the tragic event resonated in the wilderness, Yellowstone served as a sad reminder of the importance of respecting nature's boundaries. The forbidden journey of Colin and Sable Scott, captured in a few fleeting moments, unfolded as a cautionary tale of the dangers beneath the park's breathtaking surface. After this heart-wrenching incident, Yellowstone National Park reinforced the importance of adhering to safety guidelines. Beautiful yet dangerous thermal springs stand as a testament to the delicate balance. As the sun glowed on the rugged terrain north of Yellowstone National Park on March 23, 2022, the air buzzed with anticipation as Craig Pluatra prepared for a hiking adventure. He was a 40-year-old family man hailing from Livingston, Montana. Craig's love for the great outdoors beckoned him to the majestic mountains that stood as silent sentinels against the azure sky. Accompanied by a friend, the duo embarked on a fateful Wednesday morning their footsteps echoing through the serene wilderness. Driven by the primal urge to explore and perhaps uncover the hidden treasures of the untamed landscape, Craig and his companion went deeper into nature's embrace. The towering peaks and whispering pines bore witness to their journey, unaware that this excursion would take a tragic turn. Once a source of solace and inspiration, the mountains became a backdrop for a tale of unforeseen peril as the day unfolded. The winding trails, adorned with nature's wonders, concealed the impending tragedy that awaited the unsuspecting hikers. Little did Craig know that this venture into the heart of the wilderness would be his last trip, and it will begin a story that will resonate far beyond the slopes and valleys. The mountains, stoic witnesses to the ebb and flow of life, held the secrets of that unfortunate day, leaving a community in sorrow and questioning the unpredictable nature of the majestic yet formidable outdoors. Craig and his friend decided to split up during their hike in the Six Mile Creek area of the Absaroka Mountains. They separated at a certain hike point and chose different routes to reach their final destination. When Craig's friend returned to their vehicle later in the morning, a chilling realization struck he couldn't find Craig. Concerned for his friend's safety, he promptly alerted the authorities and searched for Craig. Search teams on the ground and in helicopters combed the rugged terrain, their eyes scanning the vast wilderness for any sign of the missing hiker. With their dense forests and steep slopes above the Yellowstone River, the Absaroka Mountains held secrets and dangers that only nature could conceal. Gripped by worry, the community anxiously awaited news of Craig's whereabouts. Days passed and the search intensified, weaving through the towering trees and rocky paths. Finally, the sad truth emerged. Authorities revealed that Craig had fallen victim to a suspected encounter with a grizzly bear. The news sent shockwaves through the community, leaving them grappling with the harsh reality of the wild landscape surrounding their homes. Once a place of serene beauty, the Absaroka Mountains now bore witness to a tragedy that would forever alter the lives of those who knew and loved Craig. As the community mourned the loss of a good man, a devoted husband and father, the echoes of the incident resonated far beyond the mountainous terrain. Craig's father, David Cluatra, shared memories of a son who had grown up in Massachusetts and had, more than two decades ago, found his home in the rugged beauty of Montana. A hard-working family man, Craig's joyous spirit touched the lives of those around him. 
Ann Tanner, a friend of the victim, struggled to comprehend the untimely fate that had befallen someone so strong and intelligent. The wilderness, Greg's playground in summer hikes and winter ice climbs, had unexpectedly become the stage for his final adventure. The tragic incident echoed the dangers posed by grizzly bears in the Yellowstone region, where these majestic creatures had claimed several lives in the last few years. Yet the community faced a contentious debate in the face of tragedy. Elected officials in the Yellowstone region pushed for lifting protections on grizzlies, advocating for hunting to manage their population. The tension between conservation and safety unfolded against the backdrop of more than 700 bears inhabiting the vast Yellowstone region, where fatal attacks on humans remained rare, but had seen an unsettling increase in recent decades. As the sun set behind the Absaroka Mountains, the community grappled with grief, questions about wilderness safety, and the delicate balance between human presence and the untamed wild. The legacy of Craig Cluatra, a man who met his untimely end in embracing nature's dangers, became a poignant reminder of the complexities and perils of venturing into the heart of the great outdoors.